I'm Blake Shepard. Hi guys. Hey. Hi. I am a voice actor. Um, I've been doing voice acting since 2003. I think my first show came out in 2004. How long ago was that? 13? 12, 12, 12 years, years ago. So 12 years I've been doing this. Um, been in a lot of shows. And then before that, I was just kind of a regular actor in Houston, Texas, which I'm sure as you guys know, being in Colorado, if you're an actor in a place that doesn't have like big budget movies or big producers, you're pretty much just like a circus person. And you learn how to do whatever you can to make money as a performer. Um, and then I guess by the time I was sit 17, I had decided that I didn't really want to do acting full time because I just didn't really see a future in it. And I don't know, I don't, I'd never really like wanted to go out to LA and like have a six pack and like work out all the time and like try to be like a stud and like do all that. It, I had friends that really wanted to do it and they went out to LA and they've since had careers and stuff. But I don't know, that just wasn't me. I was more into like geeky stuff and animation and cartoons and performing and all that. So I ended up getting into animation and I got a bachelor's degree in animation. And while I was in college studying animation, I got a call back from ADV Films. Uh, I got on a wait list. Uh, I will, backstory on this. So I was dressing up for little kids' birthday parties like Spider-Man and Batman and Power Rangers and like doing magic tricks and stuff. And this lady I worked with, who had worked for Stephen Foster at ADV was like, hey, they always need guys with your voice range. You should try out for ADV, they're in town. And I was like, sure, why not? And I got on like a year wait list. And then throughout that time, I'd like, eh, this isn't for me, I'm gonna go back to college. And I got a call back, so I started doing voice work while I was in school. And I had to keep it kind of under wraps because I had a lot of anime fans in college with me studying animation. So I didn't tell anyone at the time that I was doing that. And they've since come back and found me and be like, why didn't you tell me you were in this show? It's my favorite. It's like, I didn't want anyone to know. <laughs> this world is new and scary. And um, yeah, I don't, um, so anyway, so yeah, I started, uh, my first show ever was Chrono Crusade. Um, where I was like a dude with a snow globe at, it was just like a secondary kind of tertiary character that just shows up at the end and like helps one of the main characters feel better about themselves. It was a very important part. Uh, and then I went on to do Saint Seiya where I got to work with the very talented John Swayze who you guys might know from the new Beast and the Boy or Boy and the Beast. Have you guys seen that anime mm -hmm. yet? It's pretty cool. He described it as like Jungle Book meets Kung Fu Panda meets uh, Karate Kid, kind of. So anyway, but it's this new anime that came out. It actually came out in some theaters, which is kind of a cool thing. But um, anyway, he's a fantastic voice actor. Some of you might know him if you ever saw Dazed and Confused. He was the guy that shows up with the beer keg and he's like, wrong Mr. Pickford all together. So he's been in the industry a really long time and he was the first guy to like, you know, because I didn't know how to do voice acting. I'd never been a voice actor before. I'd only ever done basically children's theater when you're doing these kids' birthday parties like, and like stuff at my church when I was little. But um, he was the first one to actually like get in the booth with me and like work with me and be like, no, no, you need to like stand up and like get into it and feel it and like project and do all this other stuff and we're like, I don't know what's happening. Thanks for giving me money to do this. <laughs> and so he, he kind of helped me and cultivated me um, because it was really funny. I originally auditioned for Matt Greenfield um, when I did my audition at ADV that got me the part. And it was really funny because when I filled out the little resume that they gave us, I put on mine because it's like, what other characters have you played? So I put Spider-Man, SpongeBob, um, Power Rangers, 
Batman. You know, and like all these thinking, like I'm thinking like, oh, well, I've done all these characters' voices at these little kids' parties. And they thought I was like some like hot shot from LA that had come in with like all this like credit. It was like, and I, I nailed the audition so they didn't think anything of it. They're like, oh, when did you move to Houston? I was like, I've always lived here. It's like, when were you, when did you work on Batman? It's like, I, on the weekends, <laughs> they give me money and I put on a costume and knock on people's doors <laughs> or show up at the park. <laughs> but luckily that didn't, uh, that didn't seal my fate and they called me back. But it was funny because Matt Greenfield called me in for Chrono Crusade and I was having a really hard time understanding what he wanted. And I mean, looking back at it now, I know what he wanted, but he was like, you need to, you know, and he was kind of giving me line reads. He's like, say it like this, you know, um, you know, do this and do that. And, and I was like, okay. Uh, so I was trying to do it, but I was still very much in that like acting mindset. So I was kind of, I was, I was acting like I was on stage. I wasn't acting like I was speaking into a microphone, which a lot of actors really have that problem because when you've only trained that one aspect of that muscle, you don't really know how to transition from being on stage and performing and doing all these things to being in a voice booth and being able to take all of that energy and channel it into this. If they wanna go like this, and it sounds really weird when you put it on a microphone. So I was like, we were going back and forth and he'd already kind of talked me up to a bunch of directors. So it was like, oh, we got this new kid coming in. He's super great. Like I'd even heard that everyone else had heard that I was super great. So there was all this pressure on. And if I had just like gone back to my audition and thought about it, I probably would have been able to like do what he wanted. But, um, he basically, at the end of me doing Chrono Crusade, he was just, I was like, yeah, I was like, sorry, this is so hard for me to get. I'm just not really understanding. He's like, that's okay. This job isn't for everybody. <laughs> and like, that was basically the end of my career. But luckily, a few other directors had heard about me too. And so they brought me in and tried me. So I just made sure that I did not do whatever I did in the booth with that director. And he's since hired me after that. And um, he's, a, he's a very hard director to work for because he's the only one that'll really tell you when you sound like crap. Um, most of the other directors, like they'll, they'll let the actors have a little bit more say and, and let us kind of have a little more of our own personal instincts. Sorry I'm sucking on a cough drop, by the way. It's like really dry here, so like my throat's like, Ugh. But, um... He's, uh, he's just very, like, he knows exactly what he wants out of the actor. And he will, he doesn't care how much it hurts you, he will pull it out of you, and it will be magic. But sometimes it takes a lot to get to that point. And um, luckily with John Swayze, when I went in to record for him, he was the second director that I went in to record for, for Saint Seiya. Um, he took a little different approach, so I got a little bit of a different, more, more of a stage direction from him as opposed to the traditional anime direction, which Matt Greenfield does beautifully, but I didn't understand that coming into that world, not ever doing that before. <clears throat> so um, my first couple of shows were a little um, like trial and error. Like I just kind of had to figure it out. And that's the weird thing about being a voice actor is no one tells you how to do it. There's no like class you can go to figure out how to be a voice actor. It's pretty much like you get thrown into the into the lion's den, and you just like hopefully you, you you're there when uh, when you know I don't know I, that's probably not a good analogy, but um, but it's it's pretty much like getting thrown to the wolves. You you just you have to figure it out, and it's sink or swim. There's a lot of actors who are phenomenal actors who've gone in and tried to do voice work, and they just can't do it because um, like I said, it's hard to make that transition. Um, from stage or from you know the big performance to uh, the microphone. But I got my first lead role in Mabarajo in 2003, and that came out in 2004, I believe. Um, and like the hardest thing for me when I first started doing anime was saying the names. 
that was so hard for me because I wasn't really super into anime. I got into anime when I was in like eighth grade. And the two animes I really liked was like Akira and Battle Angel that I had on VHS. And I liked the Street Fighter anime because that had boobs in it. <laughs> and then there was like another one called like something Toshinden or like Battle Arena Fighter or something. Battle Arena Toshinden. That had boobs in it too, so that one was awesome. Um, but I mean, you know, I was like, I was in like seventh, eighth grade. So I mean, it was just like seeing cartoons with like brief nudity it was the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> it's just like, I can't look away. This is crazy. But um, I hope this isn't going on YouTube. You can cut that part out. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, so so I didn't really, I, I wasn't used to hearing names like that. Like, I think the most exotic names that I knew from anime were like in Street Fighter. That's about like Ryu, but some people said Ryu. And that was, that was Chung Li, I guess. Chung, yeah, about Chung Li, that was about all I knew. And I remember in Mabarajo, my name was Kazuki Shikimori. And I will never forget that name because I had to say it five million times, five million different ways. And I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm totally like putting myself out there, but you can even hear it in my first season of that show where I'm like, my name is Kazuki Shikimori. <laughs> I was just like, that was the best take. That was the best one. But then like, you know, within two episodes, I felt terrible because it's like, oh, I can say it now. I'm good. Like, I'm, I've, got, I've got the hang of this. <clears throat> it's like, can I go back and redo the intro? They're like, that's already been mastered. Like, it's like, oh, crap. Can we redo it second season? They're like, yeah, yeah, we can redo it. Like, we'll redo it on the next disc. It's like, OK. But anyway, so that was really funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it was really hard. I don't know if you guys have any questions you can ask, but um, I'm just kind of going through like the first couple of years of doing this. Um, recent, and then pretty soon after <clears throat> Mabaraho, well, I think I was working on Full Metal Panic Fumofu at the same time. And I mean, when I first started, you know, they were giving me like little bit parts. They were trying me out as smaller characters, trying to figure out my range. And then I got to work on this really cool show called Michelle, which was a Korean anime based on The Little Prince. And I got to be this really cool character who was kind of like, I guess that it was sort of like the animation was kind of Pokemon-esque, the style of it. And kind of like how they have Team Rocket and Pokemon, they had these three kind of zany scientist bad guys who were like really crazy and awesome. And they like had these really like, like, I don't even know if I can go that high anymore. But, um, I know it's like 19. But, uh, <laughs> but they, my character had this really high pitched, like, like, kind of crazy voice. Like, it was kind of up here. Um, but he was like this really maniacal, evil little guy. And, uh, John Swayze was directing for Sandra Kosra, who was the main director for that show. He like picked up an episode for her, or maybe he was in recording, but he heard that character. He's like, hey, who is that? It's like, oh, that's Blake. It's like, that's Blake? It's like, yeah. And then he ended up getting air gear and he cast me as Agito and Akito because he's like, hey, you can do crazy voices. This guy's got a crazy voice. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <clears throat> Uh, but no, he was like, yeah, you'd be perfect for this part. I think this is, this is, you know, it's kind of on like the edgier side and kind of like that character you did in Michelle, but a little more like, you know, more violent and kind of wild. So, uh, so that kind of like led me down that trail. So I got to work with John Swayze again on that show because he'd heard me in another show because he's also a great voice actor and does a lot of, of really cool roles. Like I said, he just did, um, uh, Boy and the Beast and, uh, so yeah, I just, um, you know, and, and during that time too, I was working with Stephen Foster doing Gilgamesh. Um, and that was the very first role that I ever got where I actually got to play uh, multiple characters in, in one show. I got to play the main character and then I got to play his father, who you find out's a clone, <coughs> spoiler alert. And uh, so it was, it was really cool to get to play the young kid and then have to play his older dad. 
and like change the voice. I mean, obviously they had different experiences, so they were like kind of two different performances altogether. And in Air Gear, when John brought me back, I got to play two personalities in that as well, because he had the eye patch and flipped it over, and on one side he was like sweet and cuddly, and then on the other side he was like crazy and wild. So, um, uh, but yeah, do you guys have any questions about any shows in particular, or do you just want me to kind of go down the list? And you know? like you as Luke, I know I think I've told you that before when you were signing, but yeah, that so was a really good role. so so Funimation that was the first lead role I got at Funimation as Luke Gangsworth and uh, Sacred Blacksmith. And uh, that was, they brought me in also to do some stuff on, I think on Brotherhood, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood or something. And um, I got to do some stuff on uh, Shin Chan. And I think there was a few other ones. I can't remember off the top of my head. But, uh, but yeah, Sacred Blacksmith was really cool, but that was a, that was a really crazy experience too because I don't know if you guys know, but in relation to Houston, Dallas is about four hours away. So I basically drove up to Dallas and stayed with a friend all week. And I did like literally like seven, eight, nine hour days all week recording Sacred Blacksmith. And as you guys know, as anime goes on, each episode, gets crazier and crazier and crazier until you finally get like the big blowout crescendo moments at the end. Whereas like, I was like done. <laughs> At the end of the week is like, oh my God, I don't have anything left. Thank God I'm getting my butt kicked. But, uh, but that was a really fun experience. That was the first time I'd ever like blitzkrieg to show like that. And that was really, really fun. That was a great experience. And I've since done it for other shows, but that was like another trial by fire where you're just, you're thrown in, it's like, do it, it's time. Like, every day, get up at eight, be there at nine, go until you're dead. <laughs> so, uh, so that was a really cool experience. And let's see, um, have any of you guys seen Zam, The Lost Memories? That one's a really cool one. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, one of Miyazaki's animators actually did it. And it's very Miyazaki-esque. It's really cool. Uh, it's got a really neat story. That one was a whole lot of fun. Um, Halo Legends was really cool. They brought me in for the uh, the Ryu guy and Gachamon, like the, the lead Gachamon guy. And it's like, everyone in that show is my age, but sounds like they're like 48 to 50. Even the young people. So I was like, you know, they brought me in for it. And it was like, I wanted the role so bad, but I knew it's like, this is not. He's like, he's just being nice. He's being nice. He's bringing you in. He's letting you audition. Because I was one of the directors that I knew really well, and I'd done some, some shows for him in the past. We worked on um, Blade of the Phantom Master together and uh, a few other shows and it was just he was a really cool guy we worked really well together he's like he's just bringing me in to be cool um <laughs> but i'll never forget that audition because i don't know where it came from i didn't even plan it but like i just wanted the role so bad and so this like really fake deep voice came out of me all of a sudden like i was doing it, i was like all of a sudden I sounded like this and like everyone looked at me like what are you doing? That doesn't sound like you at all and I was like as soon as I heard it I was like this sounds so fake and I was like but you've already done it just keep going. <laughs> it's like, you can't back out now and I remember getting to the end of it and, and they were like okay well that's well thank you. I was like do you want me to try it a different way like subtext like should, should I try it the way I probably should have done it? They're like, no, that's okay. I was like, yeah, that's all right. Because like I said, I think they were just being nice by bringing me in anyway. But they ended up casting someone who had a really deep voice. So obviously it wasn't, wasn't meant to be. But I get to play a bunch of like young school guys. <laughs> like, um, what do you call it, uh, Princess Resurrection? Yeah, so that, Princess, that was, that, was good. that was another show though where um, I did actually have to change my voice for that a little bit. I was too deep. You said and it was exactly the same you do now. Was too deep on there. 
Well, that's because I'm very excited about things that I've well, done. No, I but mean, natural. We were talking earlier. You sounded pretty much. Oh well, thank you very much. Pretty much dead on me. A little bit higher, but not. Yeah, yeah. So, so they wanted me to. Um, they wanted me to try to young him up a little bit. I didn't. I don't know. Like there were certain times in it where I could see it, and then other times I I didn't really. Like I don't know necessarily why they wanted me to young him up and not some of the other characters I've done. <coughs> I don't know. It was just the director's choice, but um, but yeah, that was one that um, yeah I was kind of nervous about when I did it because I was like, oh, what if this sounds kind of forced and like I'm trying to sound too young? But it it was cool. I, I trust the director, so thank God. I thought it was an interesting character being reborn as a some kind of zombie. Yeah, human, yeah, yeah. He not was a zombie, but I knew. yeah, he was he was a cool character. That was one show that I thought when we were working on it, and I mean. I'm an actor. I never know what the heck is going to be good or what's not. Like, I never know what people are going to like. But, excuse me, but Princess Resurrection is one of those shows when I was like, man, this show is going to be huge. This show is fantastic. I mean, it had, like, I'm a sucker for, like, Monster of the Week. Like, I'm an old school, like, I love old Scooby-Doo cartoons. I can still, like, chill on the couch and, like, throw in, like, old DVDs I have of, like, ancient Scooby-Doo cartoons and just chill. Like, those are like, that's like a big warm blanket for me. I okay, can just hang out. Okay, what about the original Ooh. series of Transformers? Yeah, so like, I like those too, but I like Scooby-Doo because the entire tone is just like, it reminds me of like, when it's raining outside and yeah. it makes you really tired and just you can just chill. fall asleep. Like, nothing in Scooby-Doo's ever really loud, except for, like, Shaggy when he's like, Scooby-Doo, where are you? And that's it. And that's all you get. That's, like, the loudest it gets. Oh, and that's another thing, too. I, um, my very first professional acting gig was being Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Um, not for any kind of TV or radio or anything that had residuals or, or made me any type of, like, residual money. I was just, uh... I was doing like uh, like malls when the movie came out. Like Verizon Wireless had something with Scooby Doo, so I would just like go hang out at Verizon stores and be like, "Like, would you kids like some ice cream?" And they had like an ice cream bar inside of the store, and you like give the kid ice cream, and then the parents are like, "Where's my kid?" And then it's like, "Like, he's over here at Verizon." It's like, "Oh, I better go in there." And then once you go in, like, "Hey, we've got deals inside. We got new phones. You need a new like phone plan." So, so yeah, so I was, I was the bait for the little kids to get them in the store. But um, I was like 16 and I just loved it because, you know, it's like, here I am with this like ridiculous job. Like I couldn't even grow facial hair and I still can, like I haven't shaved in a week and a half. But I, um, I had to like put this like brown grease paint right here for like the goatee. And I just like, just like put a little bit on. And it was just really funny because I always had people asking me if my hair was a wig. Like, are you wearing a wig? Like, like, no, that's my real hair. Does it look like I'm wearing a wig? So, I, I was upset when they got rid of uh, Casey Case and retired Shaggy. Well, that, so that's what's funny is everyone was like, wow, your Shaggy's on point. But I was never doing Shaggy. I was always doing Casey Kasem. And I got that inspiration because I love Ghostbusters as a kid. And I remember in, I think it was in Ghostbusters 2, and they're like, this is uh, Casey Kasem I'm talking to Ghostbusters. Now on with the countdown. Yeah. And so, like, I always, like, went to the Casey Kasem voice, and I always remembered that from Ghostbusters. And then I went back and remembered, and I was like, oh, my God, that's that guy from Ghostbusters. And then, so I just took the Casey Kasem voice and, like, just younged it up a little bit and made it like a stoner. <laughs> Which he was. Which he was. <laughs> and uh, so, so that was kind of funny because I always sort of came at it from the Casey Kasem angle and, like, I always, I always prided myself in, like, not necessarily doing the best Shaggy voice, but doing the best Casey Kasem impression of Shaggy voice. It's, it's a cool industry to be in and, you know, it's... There's a lot of people in it with great ideas who come from a bunch of different production backgrounds and stuff. So, I mean, there's people that came into it that were like copy editors, you know, who just like have phenomenal ideas, whose brains move at like a mile a minute and they write pilots for shows and, and do all these like amazing things. So, I don't know, there's there's just a lot of really cool talent in it. I'm really, I'm really happy to be a part of it. I'm really lucky. So.
Well, yeah. Is everyone having a good time so far at the convention? So good. I really like this hotel. It's a lot of fun. And it's snowing here. What the heck? Colorado. That's Colorado. It'll yeah. be sunny tomorrow. Dude, wow. Colorado. I was just telling them, like, I did not look at the weather before I came here. And, like, right now it's, like, 95 degrees in Houston. It is not cold. I brought this jacket because I thought it might be cold uh, in the little. airport. Yeah. I was like, I might get cold at the airport. I should bring a jacket. Other than that, I have these jeans, one other pair of jeans, and like t-shirts. That's it. That's all. That's all I brought. Oh, I brought some shorts. You don't prepare for Colorado. Colorado prepares for you. Apparently, apparently Colorado is the Chuck Norris of preparing for me because I don't think I've been outside once except for when I was waiting for the car that picked me up. And even then I was like, where's the car at? I can't stay out here. But I've been smelling weed a lot. That's very weird. It's strange. But it's great. It's good for you guys. Good for you. Good for you guys. Or when you take it out of state. reason for you come back to the UK. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions about the industry or like any anything? Is anyone still confused about why I'm sitting up here? Is anyone like I still don't know who this is? <laughs> So, if you were going to suggest for somebody who wanted to get involved in voicing, what would be your advice? Where do they start? My, my advice to anyone who wants to get started in the industry is to not try to get started in the anime industry. If you want to do voiceover, you should start doing voiceover because there is totally opportunity in Colorado to do voiceover. You guys have radio stations, you guys have local agencies. I mean, I always tell people, like it's, it's really as easy as you just making a demo reel that's good enough to give to someone where they could go, hey, you sound like one of those guys from the radio commercials. And you're like, exactly, I sound like someone from a radio commercial, hire me. And they're like, okay, I will, and that's it. It's, I mean, it's really that simple. I mean, you guys hear radio spots all the time. If you can sound like that, and you can sell whatever the heck they're selling in Colorado, crazy Kush, Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, Marijuana's, whatever you guys sell on the radio, if you guys can sell that, I'm sure that I'm, if you can make it sound like the commercials, I'm sure you can get some work. But that's really what it is, you know. I mean. And it's, it's funny because, and I, I joke about this with other voice actors, and I would never say this if you guys were recording this at all, or if this was gonna be on YouTube. But, you know, a, a lot of young voice actors start and they're like, oh man, it, I really hope I can be like you one day and like do more stuff. And like they start like jerking my chain and I'm like, whoa, dude, like it's not that hard. You're already an actor. You've already got acting experience because like that's the first thing you have to do. As long as you're an actor, the rest is just honing the muscles to make it part of your skill set. Because you've already learned how to be an actor. You already know how to tap into those emotions, whatever gets you there, right? Like you have to figure out your own method for what works for you as a human and what makes you comfortable like exploring yourself and being emotional and being emotive and being able to do all this stuff. But a lot of it is really just making sure you sound good. Like there's there's part of it that's acting, but then there's like a part of it that's like you're playing a specific kind of character and if you just watch if you just watch anime, you know like at least kind of where these characters sit in a character type. So aside from just being an actor, which is important, like you're playing a role. And it's like that with anything. If you're doing a, a radio commercial, or if you're doing, you know, a, I don't know, a spot for like a public health awareness thing for the state. I don't know what you guys do in this crazy state, but um, it, it, in any of those, you're 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 filling a, a part. You're playing a part. So it's about finding that place in your voice where that character is, right? 
So, and I'm not that I'm telling you to like do gimmicky voices. That's not what it's about. Because I have people all the time come up to me, go, oh my God, I want to be a voice actor. Everyone tells me I do the best Stewie impression. I'm like, there's already a guy that does Stewie. You got to have your own voice and do your own thing. And like, you have to find what makes you, you. And that's the hardest thing as an actor is, is being able to get out of your own head and stop worrying about what everyone else is doing and be you and like let you be the art that you're bringing to the table because you're your own unique beautiful like piece of art so just bring you and be confident in whatever that is and it'll be great because it's you so you kind of just have to cultivate your own being and then just make sure it sounds really good and you can make money at it. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't know. Never... That's, that's about it. I don't know. I'm still young. Maybe I'll have something more profound to say in like 20 years, but that's all I got right now. Just make it sound really good and feel it and, you know, do, your, do you. And I mean, really, that's 99% that's of being an actor is just figuring out what works for you as a person and <coughs> what you need to do to, to execute the the job so yeah um, but it's completely fine to record an audition on your home computer and make yourself a demo like reading the newspaper or like finding an ad and maybe you know writing your own ad or whatever that's it's fine throw some music find some free music online or download some cheap music online and buy it and put some background music on it that works with whatever spot you're doing. Just make it sound like what's already on the radio. Be a little producer and make yourself a minute and a half demo reel. You know, it's, it's not that, I mean, you maybe need three or four spots and you can fill up 45 seconds to a minute. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I would start there. Okay. Because once you have a little bit of experience, then the, then the ceiling breaks. Because then, if you ever meet a director at one of these places, you're not saying, oh my god, I'd really love to be a voice actor. You say, I am a voice actor. Here's what I've done. Here's my demo reel with my real stuff on it that you got while you were living in Colorado. And then that director goes, hey, this person's kind of like the real deal. Kind of know what they're talking about. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, I mean, it's just like any job, you know? So, and I mean, you see it in Hollywood all the time. It's like, actors fight against it like that guy that plays Thor Chris Hemsworth he's gonna be fighting against being Thor for like at least six or seven movies because he did it so well so other directors are gonna look at him and go that's the guy we need for this thing and so he's got to decide if that's what he wants to be or if he wants to break that yeah so that's that's really what you're doing is you're you're creating the conversation and getting the work in order to Eventually, hopefully, you can push beyond it and move into other avenues of the industry. What was your favorite role that you've done so far? You know, I, I think my favorite now is some of the weirder, zanier roles I've done. Like, I was just telling someone I really liked playing my character in Inuex Boku, who is like a crazy character with bunny ears who always went, bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> He was really cool. Um, I love playing villains. Always love playing villains. Um, especially now, like, as I get older, it's weird. And I was, I was talking with some directors the other day. As I've gotten older, I've, I've started getting better, like, like, cooler parts. It's like, my voice has stopped sounding so young and I'm actually starting to sound a little raspier, I guess. And I did go through this weird thing when I was like 19. Where I was like, or maybe I was, maybe I was in my twenties, but I was like, man, I was like, I'm gonna start smoking cigarettes all the time so that I can like tear my voice up, and then I can start doing like the, the, the roles that like Chris Ayers does and Chris Patton does and Greg Ayers does, and like I want to, I want to sound like that. And then I just started getting sick, and then I had to stop smoking. <laughs> and that, that that lasted like four months. I was like, nah, I don't like this anymore. But now my voice is doing it naturally. But that's the other thing too, like you're. Your, you know, your your instrument's gonna change. So, get it while you're young. Do it. Do it. Because it's, you know, and now, but I, it's like I never would have thought when I first started that if I stuck with it, that my voice would change. And now I'm, 
in a whole new range and there's younger voice actors now coming up and like one of the voice actors I work with who's phenomenal I met him at an anime convention six years ago and he was like I really want to be a voice actor I really love acting and like he'd already done some professional work he was a young kid and he'd already had some professional work and he was working on a demo reel and he's like I really want to do this and I mean there's nothing you can say to that person except yeah man do it awesome make it happen and he did he did you know he just he stuck with it and he made it a career path because he just stuck with it he just did it and you know if you build it they will come so to speak right <laughs> but what's crazy is is now he's doing voice work and I'm like the older brother or the older friend or like the guy and it's like I was him at one point but now my voice has changed and I'm doing other stuff so it's really cool like you'll you'll find that you're more fit for other things as you move on. There's always a place for you as long as you just stay in the game. So. Amen hey, to that. Yeah. For real. So. Take it for some edge of <laughs> There's always a place in the game. Stay with it. You got no way to hold them. <laughs> so yeah, um, any more questions at all about anime specific topics or related things? <laughs> If anyone, does anyone need any autographs or anything? I have, I have yes. Sharpies. <laughs>